Hello everyone! In today's video, I'll show you how to crochet this honeycomb stitch tote bag. I hope you will enjoy uh, this video. If you do, don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video and let's get into it! And to make this bag, you will need 4 to 5 balls of 50 gram cotton yarn. I have friends uh, from Hobby One, but I will link it in the description. Then you will need 4.5 millimeter hook, needle, pair of scissors, and you might as well need a stitch marker. So this bag is worked in five panels. Two uh, alike panels that will be front and back, then two alike panels that will be the sides, and then uh, one bottom panel and then handles as well. So I'm gonna start off by showing you how to do the main biggest front panel. So you want to make a slip knot, grab your hook, put that in and tighten it up. And you want to chain 45 in total. And I've now got my chain of 45 here. If you want to chain different length, then you need to chain multiples of 2 plus 1 at the end. So it can be 10, 12, 14 and so on, plus 1 on top of it. So I've got 44 and with that 1 at the end, it's 45 because we will be skipping the first one. And into the second one, you want to go with the single crochet and then make single crochets in all of those chains. So it will bring you to 44 single crochets in total for the first row. And to do a single crochet, you just go into your chain, pull up a loop and come back. You will have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both. And you want to keep doing this till the end of your chain. And once you do complete your first row, this is how it will look. At the end you want to chain one. And this is what you will be doing at the end of every single row. So chain, chaining one. Then turn your work. And for the second row, it's also going to be single crochets in every single stitch. So starting with that very first one, go in, make a single crochet and repeat this till the end of your row. And I am now at the end of my row two. I'm going to chain one, then turn my work and this is where the uh, different pattern begins because we need those two rows to be able to work our stitches. So for row three, we will be doing single crochet, spike stitch two rows below and repeat this till the end. So just to show you, you start off by doing single crochet and then it's a spike stitch two rows below. So as you can see, this is our second stitch. So instead of going into that, we will be going two rows below. So just right there where this little chain is. So it's the second chain of foundation chain that we did. So you put your hook into that chain, pull up a loop, come back and kind of pull it higher so it's in the level of your current working row and then pull through as normal so this is just exactly as a single crochet but it's a longer one and it's often called a spike stitch and that's what you will need to repeat so again single crochet in next then spike stitch two rows below in the next one pull it a bit higher and then pull through both loops. Again, single crochet in the next one, spike stitch in the next one, two rows below. 
and this is what you will be repeating till the end of your row so it's total of 22 times because we have uh, 44 stitches so it's two stitches uh, in total 22 times so I'm just gonna do that and I will meet you at the end and I'm now nearly at the end I've got two stitches left so I'm just gonna finish off by doing single crochet and then spike stitch into the very last one and it might look a bit odd because when you do spike stitch it looks like this hangs off of your row so don't worry just chain one at the end and then turn your work this is how it looks and now for the next row what you will need to do is basically do a single crochet into that very first stitch and we will be crocheting the two strands together to create a honeycomb uh, stitch so as you can see we've got our strands here so it's this one and this one the ones that are facing inside and you want to pull a pull up through that and make a single crochet so instead of going into the single crochet here we do crochet two together into the next one you do normal single crochet and then again crocheting two strands together and you will be repeating this till the end of your row I'm gonna do single crochet crochet two together until I have two stitches left and then I will meet you at the end of this row and when you come to the end of your row 4 as you can see I just did crochet 2 together here and I have 2 stitches left and there is one bar that I would do crochet together but there is nothing to crochet it together with that's why we finished this row by doing 2 single crochets instead of a single crochet and then crochet two together because we simply have nowhere to crochet this together with at the end you want to chain one as always turn your work and we now be doing row five which is exactly the same as row three uh, just a bit different placement of the first and last stitches so for row, uh, row five you want to start with a spike stitch instead and we did start with single crochet for row three so if you turn your work like this towards you as you can see those diamond shapes here uh, our spike stitch needs to go in between those two so we have one strand here which will be placed two rows below so I'm just gonna go into that space and I will do my spike stitch then I will be doing single crochet in the next one and again spike stitch so make sure when you do the spike stitch that your hook comes in the middle of that previous triangle and then just finish off the stitch as you normally do then again single crochet spike stitch which needs to come out in the middle and so on and you will be repeating single crochet and spike stitch till the end of your row and I will meet you at the end And row number five ends exactly the same as it started so it's spike stitch and then single crochet because we are repeating those two for 22 times in total so I just did my spike stitch and single crochet in the very last one then chain one and turn your work 
this is how it looks so far and for row six we will be doing uh, single crochets crochet two together again is just slightly different from row four but yeah you want to start with two single crochets and this is because again we can't crochet two together because we've got one only on the side so we need to start by doing two single crochets and by doing this we make our way to this and this which we can now crochet together so what you do is basically do single crochet and then it's a repeat of single crochet and crochet two together there is just that one extra single crochet at the beginning so yeah I'm just gonna do that and I will meet you at the end I hope this makes sense and it's kind of easier for you to do those rows when you can understand why we are doing those stitches so if when starting your row you cannot crochet two together that means that you need to make your way with the single crochets until you can crochet two together so I'm now at the end of my row six as you can see I've got two strands here which I will need to crochet together and then into the very last stitch here it's gonna be a single crochet then chain one and this is how your six rows will look like so the first two rows that we did is just there to make the beginning of the pattern so we can do those spike stitches two rows below from now on you will need to repeat rows three to six so those four rows three four five and six you will need to repeat uh, another 12 times so that in total you have 54 rows if you need you can play back from row 3 and do those 4 rows again until you get the hang of it and once I complete the front panel I'll show you how it should look like all finished up so when you finish your uh, front panel this is what it will look like it can be a bit tricky counting the rows uh, because this uh, is not a regular single crochet so you so you might get confused if you don't have enough stitch markers or if it is annoying inserting one every single uh, row what you can do is basically starting with the full diamond here or anywhere just not the half one but full if you go up you should count 13 full diamonds up till the top one here sorry here so yeah if you count 13 of them that means that you have 54 rows or if you want to make any more or less depending on your preferred size then yeah just make as many as you need and once you've got that panel done you will need to go ahead and make exact same one alike so that you have both back and front now for the side panel is gonna be exact same pattern as we did for the front panel so you want to start with a slip knot and this time chain 13 because it's gonna be shorter than the main panel Once you've got 13 so it's e any even number plus one basically an even number but yeah once you've got 13 done you want to skip the very first one and go into the second one for the single crochet and make that single crochet into every single chain till the end and this will make you 12 single crochets in total so I'm just gonna finish mine At the end of your row one chain one and turn your work to do second row which is also single crochet into every single stitch 
and at the end of row two chain one turn your work and we will begin the uh, honeycomb pattern which is exactly the same but i'm gonna show on the shorter one anyways so the row uh, three will be single crochet into the very first stitch and then spike stitch in the next two rows below you can do this by pulling up the loop and bringing it higher to the level of your row and you will need to repeat those two stitches six times so that you've got 12 stitches in total and I have two stitches left I'm just gonna do single crochet and then spike stitch in my last one then chain one and turn your work for row number five we are starting with single crochet then crochet two together and repeat this total of five times until you have two stitches left so single crochet then single crochet two together again and then there's two stitches left as you can see I'm unable to crochet this together so it's gonna be two single crochets to finish this row then chain one turn your work and for row five we will start with spike stitch so two rows below with your hook in and bring up the loop then single crochet into the next one and repeat this so spike stitch under the triangle there then single crochet spike stitch making sure that it's in place single crochet again spike stitch and single crochet chain one and then it's our row six so just because we can crochet this together we need to make two single crochets to make our way up to where we can crochet those two bars together so put your uh, hook behind both of them and do a single crochet and then keep repeating those two stitches of single crochet crocheting two together and then the last one crochet two together there and your row will end with a single crochet then chain one and this is how six rows in total will look like so two rows of single crochet and then four rows that you will need to be repeating so again you will need to repeat this another 12 times until this is 54 rows in total and once you finish this is how it will look again if you're struggling counting the rows count 13 diamonds along until you have 13 and then you will need to repeat this one more time so that you have two side panels and don't worry if it looks like the side panel even though it has the same amount of of rows is longer than your main as you can see mine is also longer this is because the main panel has way more stitches in in length and it kind of scrunches it up 
and this one is easier to stretch in length but yeah don't worry once you do sew them together or we will be crocheting it together but yeah uh, don't worry if it look if it looks longer and if it feels wrong it isn't and once you have completed both of your side pieces you will need to make your bottom panel which is exactly the same as the side just has extra four rows so instead of 54 rows you would have 58 for the bottom panel and once you're done with it do not finish off because we will then need to join the panels together so grab one of the sides This is where I finished off, so this is the foundation chain at the bottom here, and I'm um, going to fold them together. They both have uh, 12 stitches across, and I will join them using single crochet method going through both loops. And I will be placing a total of 12 single crochets. And at the end, just chain one and cut your yarn off. Cut it off, leaving a bit of a tail so we can hide this later on. And then you will need to grab your other side piece and join it using the same single crochet so I'm just gonna pop my hook into the first stitch grab my yarn pull it through and chain one to secure then go into that same stitch and make a single crochet and then go in with the single crochets in all of the stitches I'm just trying to have my tails here on the hook so I don't have to hide these two. And again, it's going to be 12 single crochets across. Again, at the end, chain one to finish off, cut your yarn off, and pull through. This is how it will look so far, joined in one long piece, and then you will need to grab one of your bigger panels. And this is my initial foundation chain, and the top is just right there. So you will need to kind of fold these around and this is where we will be joining it together with the same single crochet method. So I'm just going to grab one of the sides now. I have it from the right side out because I want that border to be visible. And I'll put my hook into the corner of both panels with my yarn and you could also secure your panels with stitch markers if that if that's gonna help you 
to keep that in place. Again, I'm trying to grab my tails, but once you have your yarn attached, go into that same space you did before and make a single crochet. And then you will need to do this all around those three sides until this is all joined together. And since, our, since these are not the stitches but the side of your rows, uh, just try to go close to the border where you can find a spot. So I'm just going to do that and then I will meet you at the end. And when you reach the corner of your first side after joining, this just simply fold bottom piece together and then repeat the same thing by doing single crochets to throughout the remaining sides so I'm just gonna do single crochets across these two and then I will meet you at the end and when you come all around at the end just chain one Cut your yarn off and pull through then you will need to grab your second panel and do the same exact thing by joining all the sides so you will have it from the right side and join it with a single crochet all around and when you finish joining second panel to the sides don't finish off just chain one at the end and we will go with a single crochet around the bag just to finish it off so there is no raw edges straight into the first single crochet there and just like this make single crochets all around so that would make you uh, 45 single crochets twice and 12 twice so it's 90 114 single crochets around And when you come around with a single crochet border, just slip stitch into the first single crochet that you did. Chain one and finish off with a bit of a tail so we can hide this in. And the last part is a handle, so you want to start with a slip knot and chain seven. Then starting into second chain from your hook, go with the single crochet and do single crochet in all six of those chains. At the end chain one and this is the row that you will need to repeat a total of 260 times it is a lot of rows but you've got this just do 
six single crochets across for 260 rows. Once you complete 260 rows, this is how it will look. You will need to find your other end, making sure that it's not twisted and fold it together just like that because we will join it along those two ends. But once again, making sure that it's not twisted. And this time we will be joining it with the slip stitch. So go into your first stitch on one of the panels into the second one then pull up a loop and do a slip stitch and repeat this for six times in total until you come to the end of your row Then chain one to secure and cut your yarn off, leaving a bit of a tail. I'm just gonna hide this initial tail because I'm not gonna need it. And I will be doing this with my needle, so you grab your work on wrong side and go into a couple of stitches one way. them back the other way and same thing one more time just to make sure that it, it is extra secure then cut it close to the stitch and that's the handle done and then you will need to grab your handle. I'm just gonna fold it in half and one side is gonna go behind the bag just like this while the other one is gonna stay here in front. Make sure that your slip stitches that you did are wrong side to the back so the right side is out and just place it where you want your handles to be and also make sure that it's even on here while you attach it to the bag also make sure that nothing is twisted It is a bit of a struggle, but you should get it. So yeah, nothing is twisted for me. I'm just gonna make sure that the handles are the same length. And I will be joining this part where my slip stitches are just to the side of the bag. You want to count the stitches from one side and then the other as well to make sure that they're placed symmetrically on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about 10 stitches and this is where my handle placement will be. And I already have a needle in the tail that has left from joining both handle ends and I'm just sewing it together
and then once you are done with the placement i'm just gonna attach this strap to the bag itself also counting 10 stitches from the side to make sure that it is straight and using the same yarn tail i will be sewing along the side then i will sew along the top here and go back the other way to the other side and the way i do this is just basically by going through both panels like this so it, it will take a bit of time to sew those handles on if you got sewing machine and if you are good at it you could basically just sew them with your sewing machine even though i have one i'm not great at it and i would probably ruin it so i will need to do this by hand and i hope that this makes sense but yeah I'm just gonna go all around to make sure I sew it in place. I will repeat the same with the other one and I will then show you the final result. And this is how it will look all finished up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe, like this video and I'll see you in my next one.